that big boss that special It ain't no game, but they saying welcome to the second level What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another level two couch conversation. We got a third person here. We got Mr. <laughs> David Diaz hanging out with us again. Um, he's just been on the channel a lot recently. Uh, so we got Tom and Keegan as well. Tom Remember and Keegan. That's, that's Tom and Keegan. <laughs> but today we are talking about kind of how do you compare indie games to AAA games? Um, this came out of the conversation because I watched an IGN, uh, I guess, podcast video on YouTube. I don't really what to call it. That's a Vidcast. Vlogcast? Vlog. vlog. A vidcast. I don't know. Vlog. Cast. Vlog. Cast. But anyways, what it was, was the only two games that so far this year they've given tens to have been two indie games. So it came out in my brain of like, can an indie game win game of the year? Yeah, Journey did. But how do you rate indie games versus AAA games at the end of the year? And how do we compare them because of the different sizes and teams? So first question to you guys is, when you guys play a game, are you aware if it's a AAA versus indie a lot of the time? I mean, yeah. <laughs> you, you can, yeah. I mean, there's some instances where you're surprised by the size of the studio, I feel like. Mm -hmm. You start playing it and, and you really get into it and you're like, wow, this is like done by two people. Um, like, but crap. I think a lot of the times they set themselves apart in pricing alone. Mm -hmm. um, Usually $20 or less. Yeah, exactly. If you're on a PSN store and you see anything under 20 bucks, you can be pretty sure the studio is small. One of the only ones that kind of was surprising pricing wise versus quality wise i thought recently was ratchet and clank mm -hmm. so that was like a 40 50 dollar game mm -hmm. it's a fucking beautiful game mm -hmm. really well made by a really top tier company mm -hmm. and you kind of you know, sit back and wonder like what does that get classified as i think we ended up calling it like a double a or something yeah like that. double a double a battery yeah um, you can check out we have the we have a bite if you guys want yeah, we'll have a pop up here and you guys yeah. can check out our bite of it but yeah that game is but it's think, in between i think you know yeah i think you know the difference, but I think there's levels yes. of difference. Like that being one that's kind of in the middle. Mm -hmm. How about you? Well, I don't know. It depends because there's there's games like No Man's Sky that's coming mm -hmm. out, and that is a very how many people did that? That's not very many, but that, no, that game is very like a side thing. Like like they yeah. had a studio yeah. and like three dudes went in a room and just <laughs> made that. Yeah, yeah it's like slide. it's like if you look behind the boards, mm -hmm. then yeah. there's their game, mm -hmm. and that I mean is I guess it's been announced it's coming out pretty soon did you hear about the, the file size for that six gigs six gigs man for a game and most of that's that audio infinite that's insane mm -hmm. i guess they use the internet for a lot of that i don't yeah. know how that even works i don't it's supposed I, to be I procedural be which i think is crazy yeah how exactly like the whole universe is procedural but yeah i mean so something like that where it's very ambitious and very like large scale and the price tag and you think it it's doesn't AAA. scream right it doesn't scream i'm an indie game it mm -hmm. it it sort of goes in hidden amongst them. And, You're right, and, yeah. I never even had considered No Man's Sky because No Man's Sky was one of those things that came out of the blue when they first announced correct. it, which I think it, that happened for the, the developers train that were making jumped it on too. It. Yes. And everyone just took one look at it and was like, what the fuck was that? Like, I need to see that again, please. <laughs> right. And then they, you know, all the rest of it came out with like, you know, this is what it looks like, this is what we're working towards. And I think that if you did not know that from the beginning this game is made in a small room somewhere. Mm -hmm. You may have no idea that it was so, a indie game. So, along those lines, when you have a game like that, that's like, oh, it's five, do you think... Because obviously, like, if we talk about Activision, um, Infinite... Uh, who makes Solid Infinite Ward is the name of them? And then... Activision and Infinity Ward. Infinity Ward. Yeah. Uh, if you talk, they have billions of dollars behind us, millions and billions of dollars behind them. Things like No Man's Sky, are you scared of looking at this indie game and it gets all this hype and you're kind of like... Well, we putting too much too much pressure on them because they are only however many dudes that are sitting in this room. Like, yeah, that's that's one thing. I where... think they're unique in the sense that that game, mm -hmm. yes, there's too much pressure on it. Mm -hmm. Not every game. No, not I every think, indie game. Yeah, and I think but... that like just that game more so because of what they're promising. What they're promising is something that doesn't exist, mm -hmm. and that's a a, 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 lit a literal almost infinite universe that no one is going to have the same experience mm -hmm. twice, and you are billions of light years away from other people in the game i think in some senses the indie game kind of gets a pass in some yeah because and a lot you of don't them, yeah. get the expectation and then you get something like limbo or, yeah. Journey, or inside or inside where Woo! you're really impressed with it but are you as impressed as you would be if you knew or or yeah. is it you know mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you're right. I think that's uh that's interesting as well in terms of like how some of them you you maybe overlook mm -hmm. some of the things that you wouldn't overlook in a triple A. If you were playing a triple A and something happened in Call of Duty that you're like oh, that's kind of shitty, but if the same thing happened in a game like Bimbo or, or Inside, you might kind of let it go because you're like, well, it's a small game. It's a small game. Developers. I also paid less money yeah. for it. I mean, yeah, that's the other thing too. Money, exactly. So, so there's definitely. Yeah, I think monetarily and also like the consideration of the gamer knowing how many developers were a part of the mm -hmm. that come into it. I don't think it should be disqualified from being counted in the same ranks if it's good enough. Though. Yes. Um, like the witness. I mean, so the two the two games that got it was Witness and Inside, which are mm -hmm. ironically both puzzle games, kind mm -hmm. of. I mean, that's what they are at their core, and I think it's funny because. If you get a game, I think they got tens be, for two reasons. One, they're different. You talked, we talked about this. What makes a good game and uniqueness? Yeah, I think both Inside and Witness have that unique quality to them. Um, but I don't necessarily me think like if the, the other thing of a AAA is a lot of times AAA play it safe and it's the same thing over and over again. So like Call of Duty is never going to win Game of the Year guys. because I don't yeah, think right. they ever do anything that catches people's attention versus. No Man's Sky. If No Man's Sky lives up to what it says it's going to do, it, it'll probably be one of the best games of this generation. Yeah. That's a big if, but if it does, it'd be I, incredible. Yeah, and the fact that it's a small company doing it is just so great. That, yeah. that, that it was such a good good time with make that right claim. Yeah, yeah, it's a great, I mean, as far as like a time to be alive for video games, fuck, like this is the time. Like, you got VR around the corner. <laughs> you got, I can't wait for that. You got these indie game developers that are making games that just are blowing minds left and right. And you can get them really easy through digital download. I mean, yeah, and the thing, that, and the, like you and said, get the money. Yes. <laughs> the yes. unique aspect of it is great too because a lot of indie games were the first games that were talked about in a, in a debate uh, of, of art as gaming or games as art, mm -hmm. where we talked about games like Journey and, and Eco and, and Shadows of the Colossus and those types of games that were more of an experience necessarily than a game. And, um, you know, even though they could fit into both categories. And I think that that lends a bit of extra credence as well in the fact it's kind of, it's very similar to thinking about your blockbuster movies versus your, your indie, indie developed comedies and things mm -hmm. like that. You know, like you have your like American Pies and things like that. And then you also have like Little Miss Sunshine. They mm -hmm. come out and just blow everyone away. Like, so I think that would you, if you were watching like the Oscars or fucking whatever, Golden Gloves, I don't know. <laughs> and, um, and they had a trailer for both of those things on there you would mark them against each other. You mm -hmm. wouldn't say because more money went into American Pie than Little Miss Sunshine. I think there's more expectations because yeah. there's more money into it. Like Potentially, said, but yeah. But at the same time, you don't when it comes to when them. it comes Yeah, when it comes to how good they can be, you can't dismiss them. Yeah. I mean... Right. And, 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 and again, it's almost like they're more impressive if they don't have that money put into them to yes. begin with. So. Right. Yeah. Like, how did you... Because games are expensive to make. They I mean, I, yeah. the, GTA obviously is the most expensive game of all time. $300 million to make that game. It's a really great game, really well done, but you can also have a game that somebody makes in their room that pretty much all they're putting into it is their time and energy. Like mm -hmm. I mean, Axiom Verge, made by one yeah, guy, did that's everything. Crazy. He did every single thing. The sprites, the music, all ten yards. Mm -hmm. That wow. guy just you know, and that's the uh, to me, again, it's the equivalent of like one dude sitting in his bedroom, you know, stealing hip hop beats and, and, and rapping over them and putting them on San Clyde and then getting signed or whatever. It's like, it's cool that you can do that, that, you, that, that we're in an era where everything is so readily available and there's so much that's already out there. Schools are teaching coding, um, you know, it's actually becoming such a popular class, like computer science and things like that now, things that did not exist when me and you definitely were, uh, <laughs> were growing up. And uh, it's so awesome to see that, that it's actually like that ingrained in our culture right now, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So. So, yeah, I think yeah. so. I think they could be on the same level. They'd be on the same level, same tier. They, I mean, you should rank them the exact same way. But I think you do have to keep in mind when it comes to, like we said earlier, the shortfalls, keep in mind the size of these studios. Yeah. Just and, and like we, you know, we actually, before we started recording, we were like, do they have their own award ceremony? We yeah. feel like they probably did, they did, but we weren't sure. So we looked it up, and yeah, of course they do. Um, we didn't know that. And it. yeah, were, but you still will see them show up uh, in like the actual like, IGN, video game GameSpot. awards and things like that. And, uh, and I think that there's been almost a higher emphasis on those types of games on in uh, e3 conferences mm -hmm. lately because those are the ones that shine and those are the ones that even you know you get your big games that come out of nowhere like originally like a watchdogs looked pretty impressive and out of nowhere but that uh, looked what was like what AAA. was the the game that did really badly the walking simulator 
Uh, there are Order many. 1866. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was another one that, like, yeah. looked well and... You had a lot of money. Demo. But then again, much that different. was technically a smaller studio. Those That's guys true. had only ever done God of War games for the PS, like, Vita or whatever before yeah. the PSP. And then they were like, okay, make AAA game for the launch of <laughs> PS4, like, uh. please. <laughs> and uh, they put so much into it, and it is a beautiful game. Just they weren't, like, putting mm -hmm. things in the right place. Yeah. I think. So what do you guys yeah. think? How do you guys judge uh, indies versus AAAs when it comes to spending your money? Because obviously it's all coming out of the same cash pool in the end. Do you do you go to more towards indies? Do you go more towards AAA? How do you rate them? How do you decide where to get them from? Uh, do you watch Quick Bites or Bites to figure out which ones to buy? Let us know down below. Um, and let us know what your favorite uh, indie game is. Because I'd be interested to see what ones are out there. I have to think on that. Now that I said do that. too. I don't know what mine would be. But let us know down below. We might play them on the channel. Who knows? Yeah. So, thanks for watching, guys. And as always, welcome, welcome to, to the, the second, second level. level. Bye. Bye. So the best way to get in touch with Level 2 Gamers is head over to Twitter and follow us at Level 2 Gamers. We're going to sit here until you do that. Have you gone yet? Go. Come on, bro. No, just... I'll make it easier. Put a link here. Just go. Why are you still here? Go to Twitter. I don't think they're going to Twitter.